The Fishing Paper Show is proudly brought to you by United Fisheries, bringing fresh fish to your plate. This week, let's look at intensity and how this can help us separate target fish from bait fish and also identify different fish species. The strength or intensity of the echo is shown on the screen in stronger, darker colours. The darkest colour on the screen will be the strongest, most intense echo received. This shows this very well. The majority of the school is yellow, showing a medium intensity, but there are points where it is red and on this occasion we can take that as being the fish grouped closely together. Using this theory we can now start to look for bait fish and target fish on our screen. If we look at this picture for example, you can see that over on the right hand side there is a large echo for very strong red colour in the middle. Whenever you see anything like this, it is very likely to be bait fish that is grouped tightly together. Once you have found bait fish that look like this, start searching for what could be causing them to be so tightly packed together. Nine times out of ten, this will be the predatory fish coming in for a feed. Look to the left hand side of the bait fish. You can very clearly see the yellow echo just above the seabed. This is kingfish attacking the bait fish, causing them to compact into a tightly packed ball. Different fish give off different intensity echoes, but there's no way for me to tell you what they look like because each brand of sounder will show them slightly differently. The best way for you to learn this is to try and catch everything you see on your screen and then over time you'll soon be able to match the echo with the different fish species. And now it's time for Show Us Your Tackle and the guys in the next segment got so excited I really did think they were about to show us their tackle. Check this out. Now the further you move back up the river, different techniques are needed to catch the white bait. Strangely enough this raised platform that I'm standing on is called a trench. However the water is yet to arrive and uh, the guys that own this particular stand are proving as elusive as the white bait. However I have a sneaking suspicion I know where they're lurking. One thing I have learned about white baiting on the west coast is that in order to be successful, you really have to put the time in. And in doing so, you often have to endure some serious hardships. Here we are. Good to see you, mate. You too, mate. It's a bit better than the average white bait shack I was expecting. So <laughs> tell me about it. Um, yeah, here for two and a half months, you've got to be comfortable. But no, we have a lot of fun. Plus, we've got flounder nets. We put flounder nets in out here. And it is, it's a ball. It's just a, it's a good holiday. But when the tide comes in, you've got to be sitting out there like a shag on a rock watching. And uh, when you see the bait go on the net, you lift it up and tip it into a bucket. It's the hut thing of it. Is that part of the whole white baiting West Coast experience? You get some real cold days down here. You yeah. know, especially with the easterly coming off the hills there in the morning, it gets bloody cold. So we've got the fire in there. You know, you've got to look after yourself. You get yeah. older. I uh, see so you've um, got the power on, you've yeah. got the uh, television. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so you sit yeah. there and watch Days of Our Lives. Get around to it. <laughs> Blame you. Hey, what's your role in all this? Well, I own the stand. JV Fish is mine. Yeah. He does a good job of it. Yeah, I have to confess that I was expecting white bait patties, but um, we've got venison sausages. So either that's an indication that you're tight as, yeah. or it really has been a bad season. It'll be, it'll be the worst year that we've ever had. So yeah, we can't afford, can't afford white bait for you, Crimpy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this what's year. your best day, day so far? This year? Yeah. Oh, I'd have to kill you if I told you. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously fished this region for some time. Is it as good as it used to be? I don't think it's any worse. A lot of people say, you know, that the white bait, you know, they're getting less and less all the time. But what they've got to realise is there's a lot more fishing. This is the thing, a lot more people out there. If every region had the same fishing rules and bylaws that we had, it would make it a lot easier too. I mean, it, it makes it quite difficult for somebody um, 
coming in from outside trying to fish our rules and getting offside with the with the natives uh, before they even kick off. And when they're running they're on a mission? Yeah, they're on a mission all right. Yeah. You catch out stop and they'll just go straight up to the river. Yeah. Everybody gets them. Yeah. So what's the, what is it actually like when that happens? You know? Oh, it's bloody good. What's the yeah. best you've experienced in terms of a full-on run? Oh. I remember years and years ago when we were fishing, when we were kids up the back further, we'd fill up bathtubs of white bait, you know, and put them in sugar bags and pillowcases. Four years back we had uh, run bait come through and I was on the front trench there and I got 68 kilos uh, in about, I don't know, two, two and a half hours. There's one picture at home that I remember from when I was young that Dad had three 44 gallon drums and five, six big bags of baits. Now it might not be the white bait paddy that I was expecting, but it really is part of the rustic charm of fishing here on the coast, white baiting Hokitika style here in the batch, waiting for the tide to come in. And that was Johnny V, the star of that show with Johnny and Amy in supporting cast. Now we've got to take a short break, it's time for that cover. When we come back, some handy hits from Hamels. <laughs> 